There are so many different people missing in the state of Kentucky. When I started doing some research on one particular case, I came across this post. This is from whas11.com. Now, this was po this was dated 2019, so this has probably changed somewhat since then. As of right now, keep in mind this was February 2019. So four years ago, there were 240 people missing in Kentucky, 145 men and 95 women. But this is one story I want to share. Michael Gorley. It's been four years since Michael Gorley's mother last saw him. So this would have been 2015. She continues to search for answers. Michael Gorley's mother has been searching for answers. It's been four years since her son walked out the door and said, See you later. There are two, okay, there are 240 missing people in Kentucky. Their cases grow cold quickly, and as clues and calls start to lessen, family members often feel like they will never get answers. This is Chapter 1 The Disappearance. On May 17, 2015, Sandra Hasty saw her son for the last time. Michael Gorley, age 38, left the home they shared in Stanford that morning, heading out to a friend's house. He said, I'll see you later. I'll be back later. Later that day, Hasty heard a knock on the door. Two women told her Gorley had driven his truck into a pond and that the pond owner wanted the truck out of the water. Confused, she headed out toward the pond. Gorley's truck was there, but he was not. By 11 p.m., Hasty had still not heard from her son. She called the friend whose house Gorley was supposedly at. They told her he was there. Looking back, Hasty does not believe the friend's story. I think my son was beat there, was trying to get away, and then was run over by a car, she says. The truck ended up submerged front forward in the pond. I think they were trying to sink his truck, but it got stuck. In a moment of desperation, Hazy, Hasty flagged down a state trooper, telling him she believed her son was missing. According to Hasty and her daughter, the trooper followed up with the people, but did not work to find her son. He told her he assumed that he had just left his life behind. The family said there's no way Gorley could do that. See, this is something that perplexes me. It's the job of the police to take reports and to look into those reports. It's not the job of the police to dismiss family members. And while it had only been a few hours since he went missing. If you know your family member very well and you know their patterns, you know when they're, when they're gone, you know where, when basically when they'll show back up. If they're known to go off and be gone for weeks at a time without calling, you might not look into it as soon. But if it's someone who's just left the house for a couple of hours and they say, I'll be back, and they don't turn back up, and in addition to that, their truck is found in a pond. It's not the place of the police to just be dismissive. There is no way he would have just walked away. If my son was going to spend the night somewhere, he would have told me. I knew immediately if they would have just listened to me from the beginning, this would have been solved. My son would have been found. Feeling like police were not doing all they could to help find her loved one, Hasty and her daughter set out to get answers. When Michael went missing, it was like pulling teeth to get help from law enforcement. We did what we could with the, within the capabilities of what the law would allow us to do without putting ourselves in jail. The family pulled Gorley's truck out of the pond. They went to the house where he was last seen and talked to the people who saw him last before he went missing. While on their search, they found his shoes and hat at the friend's house. 
something hasty found unusual. If Gorley had run away from his life, why would he have not worn his shoes and hat? Frank Thornbury, the detective now on the case, agreed. Could Michael Gorley be living on a beach in Australia somewhere? Absolutely, I'm not eliminating that, but the likelihood is no. To have an individual just walk down the road with no shoes on and a pair of shorts and just disappear into thin air doesn't happen very often. Hasty and Coffee, her daughter, turned to social media, sharing his story on Facebook and seeking answers while police struggled to find any evidence. The original trooper followed up with the people who last saw him, interviewed them, located the car that he was in at the time. So according to the case file, the trooper did what the trooper needed to do in order to conduct a missing person investigation. A private investigator helped the family look for clues. The investigator agreed that a missing person's investigation would not help the family Find Gorley in a timely manner. Probably 90% of our cases are foul play. They're murders. They're not handled the way. They're not handled that way, unfortunately, said the investigator. By the time it's believed to be a homicide, the case has gone cold. See, this is what I say, why the police should not dismiss it. Um, because... Many times it does turn out to be foul play, and it does turn out to be something that had they looked into it as soon as the person's reported missing, and they they go and they talk to people and they look around, may come up with a clue early enough, and, and it just doesn't make any sense to me why they are so quick to just say, people run off and start new lives. That's TV that's movies. That doesn't happen in real life. Without a, mo a body or a murder weapon, it's hard to build a case. Hasty says she knows her son is dead. I know he's dead. I feel it in my heart and my spirit. But still, she has not given up hope of bringing his killer to justice. She, r she now runs a Facebook group for missing loved ones called Missing and Murdered Loved Ones in Kentucky. Hasty shares her son's and thousands of other stories. I know there's people that have been missing a lot longer than Michael, but he's my baby. Everything I do is in honor of him. Hoping to bring peace to the family, Thornbury says he continues to work on the case so the family can have a proper closure. I don't give up hope because if I did, that means I'm done. Thornbury said the lack of information makes the job difficult. Remembering the amount of dead ends and conflicting accounts he's had in this investigation, he still knows that someone out there has information. What if this was your family member? He was 38 years old, white, male. His birth date was December the 22nd, 1976, 5 foot 10 and around 220 pounds. He was last seen wearing a blue and white Hawaiian print swimming trunks, black Crocs, and a camouflage print hat with a black oval logo reading Real Team Realtree. Um, Gorley had a short goatee at the time of his disappearance. He has an inch-long scar on the right side of his jaw and the inside of his right wrist. He has an appendectomy scar on his abdomen, and um, he has the following tattoos. He has his last name, Gorley, G-O-R-L-E-Y, on his upper right arm, a cross on his upper left arm, the name Stephanie on the inside of his right forearm, a letter M in blue, green, and orange ink on the right side of his chest, and a Chinese symbol on his calf. Um... He was last seen at his friend's home in Stanford, Kentucky on May 17, 2015. His friend stated he left on foot between 8.30 and 9 p.m., walking towards Junction City about two miles away. However, when his mother called the house at 11 p.m., 
the homeowner told her that he was still there. He didn't arrive home that night or the next morning. His mother and sister went to that house to look for him. They found his shoes and hat on the porch, but there was no other sign of him. He has never been heard from again. It was then that his friends, and I use that term loosely, told his mother he had left between 8.30 and 9. His mother doesn't believe he would have gone anywhere without his shoes. Now here's where this case takes a curious turn. Linda Price disappeared within a few weeks of Michael Gorley. They were both part of the same group of friends. Neither of them has been seen or heard from, and it is unclear if their disappearance is connected. Gorley's family believes he was murdered by the people he knew and trusted, and they think they know who it was. Police believe there was foul play involved in this case, but they have no suspects in his disappearance. His case remains unsolved. Now, you go back and you click on the name of Linda Price, and here is what you find about her. She's been missing since June the 8th of 2015. She was a white female born August the 17th, 1983. She would be 39 years old today. She was 31 at the time of her disappearance. 5 foot 3 to 5 foot 5 at around 125 pounds. She had blonde hair and gray eyes. Her ears are pierced and she has the following tattoos. A multicolored flower in the center of her back, a pink and black tribal symbol on the back of her right shoulder, the Leo zodiac sign on her left wrist, and multicolored stars and ivy on her foot, on her right foot. She has a rose on her right bicep and a butterfly on her left ankle. Um, she was last seen in Danville, Kentucky on June the 8th, 2015, when she spoke to her father. Her mother last spoke to her on May the 20th. She has never been heard from again. Her mother reported her missing after a year passed without any contact. She left behind two children. Price and Michael Gorley disappeared within a few weeks of each other, and they were both part of the same group of friends. Both cases remain unsolved. What was going on there? Was there some, had there been some event? Had someone been, um, you know, was there any kind of court case pending for someone in this group? Were these two people going to be witnesses to something? Maybe they did witness something. Linda Price, Linda Marie Price, nicknamed Linda Ellis or Linda Wilson, was last seen May 20th, 2015. Um, at the time of her disappearance, she was 32 years old. She had strawberry blonde hair and gray eyes, and it goes on to tell about her tattoos. And um, Rumors have been told that Linda was murdered, but Trooper Frank Thornbury stated there, has been, there have been people who have come forward with information, but no one seems to actually have real evidence, and no one seems to actually have seen or spoken to Linda before she disappeared. According to public information from multiple news affiliates, in November of 2016, Jeffrey Miller had been arrested on October the 28th and was charged with retaliation against a participant in a legal process, which Houstonville Police Chief Fred McCoy stated people first called him complaining that Jeffrey Miller had been making threats online against an alleged informant. He had also made flyers with the informant's personal information and had been spreading them throughout the Stanford area. To make matters even stranger was when he took the time to make a verbal threat to the informant and was quoted as saying, you're going to come up missing just like Linda Price. Why would a man make a bold statement that he can make somebody disappear? Is there a possibility that the other missing persons' cases 
are connected to Linda Price. No one knows for sure, but if you have any information regarding this, please contact Kentucky State Police, Post 7, 859-623-2405. She left behind two kids. So this Reddit user says, I have questions. Who has custody of the kids? Linda did not have custody of her kids. So, is it possible that she was known to take off and be gone for long periods of time, and that's the reason why the mother didn't contact the police right away and report her missing? There's This, this whole thing goes so much deeper here with these two people having known the same groups of people and there being this guy who was... Um, now, see, there's another case here. When you click on this, it's from WYMT. WYMT is a local news station from Hazard, Kentucky. And this is Savannah Spurlock. Now, tips that were being called in about her, some people say, were also that they had put out these tip boxes so people could drop in anonymous tips. They didn't have to say their name or anything and just drop them into these tip boxes for her family to go through and see if there was anything credible there. People started dropping in tips about Michael Gorley. Um, sister station WKYT reports Michael Gorley who had gone missing in May of 2015, tips were being left in the tip box for Savannah Spurlock. Gorley's mother refuses to let this case go cold. My son was murdered. I know he was murdered. I don't know how long they want to consider him a missing person, said his mother, Sandra Hasty. Hasty is hanging up boxes in the area in hopes that someone may have some information about her son. The link brought over 2,000 tips for Savannah, so we're praying he'll do the same thing for Michael. Gorley's mother says that she checks the boxes once a week. Write down what you know on a piece of paper and drop it into the box. No one has to put their name down. We just want tips that may lead us to the truth about our missing son. Um, so now this was in 2015. Spurlock's family also donated a box to help the family of Linda Price, who also went missing from Boyle County in 2015. To conclude this video, I will just say that the last update that I could find was from February of 2023 was a story on the Interior Journal and it pretty much just says that Michael Gorley's case remains open. It's still unsolved. Um, Gorley was 38 years old at the time that he was last seen. According to the friends who were at this house that he had went to, he was um, reported to have left there at around 8.30 to 9 a.m. And he was traveling in a gray 2001 Ford Explorer. The last time that his mother saw him, he said he was going to a friend's house, but he did not come home that night. She called that night to check on him, and that she was told at that time that he was still at that home. However, about 3.30 to 4 p.m. on May the 17th, two women came to her door saying that he had driven his truck into a pond on Wilderness Trail Road, and the owner wanted it removed. This is when she became concerned. When he had not turned up that night, she began to look for him, and she asked the friend to bring him home, but no one ever did. The next day, 
She went to that house, and this is when she discovered his hat and shoes on the porch. Um, it's possible that they were just a lot of people there that night, and maybe whoever answered the phone just didn't want to be bothered with going to look for him. Maybe they thought he's outside, and they just told her, yeah, he's still here. Maybe they thought he was still there. But the family believes that there was foul play, and I believe the police believe that now as well. Then when you factor in this disappearance of this Linda Price, um, and the fact that they were both known to um, be part of the same circle of people, um, the mother says, my son did not go anywhere barefoot. He wouldn't even walk around in the house barefoot. This is how she knew something was wrong when she found his shoes. Friends searched for Michael for days, walking up and down the roads, through the fields, with little to no help from the police. Days turned into years. It's been seven years, eight months, said Sandra. This was on January the 22nd of this year. Michael would be 46 years old today but his mother has no doubt that he's dead. She bought a headstone for Michael and is paying for funeral arrangements if the day ever comes that his remains are found. Every time Sandra hears about human remains being found, she is put through the same pain all over again. But I'm sure that at this point she's hopeful that, it, that she would get that phone call or that knock on the door to tell her that it was him, so at least she would be able to put that to rest, finally. She says no real police work was done on the case until Detective Frank Thornbury was assigned to the case about six months after Michael went missing. She kept his hat and shoes in a plastic bag as well as other, as well as other pieces of evidence that she thought might be useful. The police never collected these items until Thornbury was assigned to the case. This young man, his family, went looking for him the very same day that he left the house. You know, just like I said about Shanann Watts, within hours of her friends not seeing her post on social media or having any contact from her, they started reaching out to the police. This man's family did as well. Now, Linda Price, it was reported that her mother had not reached out to anybody for a year. I don't know why that's her business. I don't, you know, like I said, I don't know what this woman's lifestyle was like. Maybe they were um, not in, con you know, maybe they were not in contact with each other. This woman says she believes the reason the police didn't put any urgency into finding her son was because he was a male and he was not a young, blonde-haired woman or child. And that's possible. Like I said, men's cases don't always get the same kind of attention as missing women and children. But just like this Linda Price, her case didn't get the same kind of attention that, um, you know, Shanann Watts or someone like that got. Michael had been released from jail five days prior to disappearing. His mother said the car he was in was pulled over by the police and all four in the car were arrested on drug trafficking charges. Michael and one other person were released in May after a grand jury failed to indict them. The others in the car were convicted. It took a while for police to take the case seriously, telling Sandra that he was a grown man and he could take off if he wanted to. Sandra said he didn't have any money and was living with her, so the likelihood of him just taking off was very unlikely. She hired a private investigator to help look for him, and he continues to work to this day searching for her son. Sandra now spends most of her time trying to bring awareness to her son's case 
as well as hundreds of others who have gone missing. She created the group Missing and Murdered Loved Ones in Kentucky to bring awareness to the numerous cases across the Commonwealth of missing persons or unsolved murders. The group has over 16,000 members. Detective Thornberry said he hasn't given up either. He's still looking for leads and information. He says he has interviewed over 50 people. We've done multiple searches. I've interviewed the same people multiple times. This case is more difficult because no remains have been found. But the case is not cold, he said. I'm actively working this case. I've gone to eastern Kentucky, western Kentucky, and Indiana. Since Michael is still considered a missing person, Thornsbury said a new Kentucky State Police intel analyst will be looking at the case. Kentucky State Police has an intel analyst that solely works on missing persons cases. I just need someone to tell me where he is and I will go find him. I've been working on this case for seven years. It's a sad situation, he says. If you go to the National Missing Persons Database, there are so many names. He also says if anyone has any information or tips, they can remain anonymous and contact the Kentucky State Police at Post 7 or go to the Post 7 website. The phone number is 859-623-2404. And that's pretty much where Michael Gorley's case remains today. As for Linda Price... The reason I put these two cases together was because there was a possible connection. It's very possible that their cases are not connected in any way other than that they both just happen to be from Kentucky and they both just happen to know some of the same people. While there's nothing good about these cases, there's nothing good about these young people going missing or whatever age they might be. The, the one good thing that has come out of this is there have been so many groups that the, these people have taken this incentive to start working to help others. Savannah Spurlock's family and has been working to try to find, to help other families who have children who've gone missing or loved ones who've gone missing. Now, Michael Gorley's mother is working to try to help others as well. And it's a network. And the case that I mentioned earlier about the young man who went missing in western Kentucky back in the 80s, his mother did the same thing. The last update I was able to find on Linda Price was from 2020. It just says that at the time of her disappearance, she was 32 years old. Um, strawberry blonde hair. It, g it gives a description of her tattoos and such. She was last seen June 8th. 2015. She last spoke with her father and her mother last spoke with her on May the 20th. Um, there's some connection to the Michael Gorley disappearance. They go on to talk about this Jeffrey Miller and the threats that he made and that's pretty much where her case stands right now. If you have any information on her, you can contact Kentucky State Police, Post 7, at 859-623-2405. Thanks for watching.